All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear Traders Club member. All right, as promised last night, uh, I will do a very simple video for you to understand the REITs concept, okay? Because I get this question at every Traders Club. So I think by recording it now, uh, we can all learn from it very quickly and easily. So very quickly, right now, let us take a look at this uh, REITs, which is called Capital Land Ascenders REIT, one of the quality, I would say quality reads that I have owned for a decade, I think, more than 10 years already. Okay, let's get down to the latest uh, quarterly earnings, okay, from this capital land. Now, uh, let me address a few points in this uh, press release that every time, every quarter, when they announce their QR, quarterly earnings, they're going to release this press release. Now, you don't need to go through the financial table numbers, financial uh, statements like the balance sheet, la, the, the income statement, the uh, cash flow statement, which a lot of us will not understand because we are not financially or accountancy trained. Okay, but at least a simple English concept you must know la, as an investor. So let's take a look at this. The very first point is telling you the property income is up 6.7%, means good. Okay, their property income is up uh, means that their earnings is up. So this is a positive. Now, any REITs uh, that tells you their net property income is down, <laughs> this is the REIT to, to uh, avoid or because they run into headwind, i.e. man you life. Lah. Oh, okay, so next one. Uh, okay, then it will tell you that they have a quick, they have uh, made some accretive acquisitions. Oh, quick. Accretive acquisition. So this is uh, not very important to me. What I want to see, all right, is their income is up. I can't do it. Let's be practical. Must make money. So income is up. And why is it up? They will tell you uh, robust operation performance. Okay. Now, next thing is high portfolio occupancy. That means this REITs, right, usually they own, unless you're talking about business trust, uh, but I'm talking about REITs right now. So REITs, they own properties and they lease out the space, be it commercial, shopping, or industrial. In this case, Ascenders is industrial plus a little bit of data center. Okay, so their portfolio occupancy is at 94.4%, which is high. Okay, and you don't want to see they report a drop in portfolio occupancy. Very simple. If you have got, uh, uh, let's say you have got 10 stores, you rent out all 10 stores, you make X amount of money. But once one of the store at the Kopitiam, you only can rent out eight stores, two store give up. Your Naturally, your income, uh, rental income will decrease. It makes sense to you? Oh, very simple to understand. Uh. So high portfolio occupancy, 94.4% is good, so long they don't report a decline. And 94.4%, uh, that means they have got another 5.6% to grow in the portfolio occupancy. That means there's growth potential for these REITs. Okay? Business, environment, all that. I uh, will talk about it later. Now, they also did a positive average rental revision of 14.2% for leases that were renewed during the first half. That means when people renew their lease, uh, they actually increase the rental. No? That means they collect even more money. Oh, they collect even more money. So, in all, when you read this first point, right, you can you can get a glimpse of it. Hey, actually, the business for ascenders reads not bad. They, they manage to increase the rental upon revision. They also manage to have a high, okay, not manage to have, but they do not have a portfolio occupancy that is on the decline. Next, ah, okay. Now, uh, this one I say not important to me. Now, leverage. This is also very key to reads. Uh, usually you don't want to see more than 40%. If their leverage is more than 40%, then uh, they may trigger the 50% level, which then they may be forced to sell asset or uh, raise cash. Okay? Because that is something like uh, uh, a loan call, something like this. Okay? Uh, keep it very simple for you. I don't want to use too many uh, difficult financial terms. So the leverage or they, they call it the gearing ratio, 36.7, 30 over percent is fine. One day, if the REITs shoot up to 40 over percent, it will be in trouble. Okay, so far, uh, this REIT do not have this problem and uh, any other REITs that you're looking at, you are thinking to buy, you check out their leverage. Okay, it should be less than 40%. And also, they have a high proportion of fixed rate debt of 82%. Okay, that means 82% of their debt is fixed rate. 
Okay, so any increase in the interest rate, Guanta P4, that means it's none of their business. So they will be affected, but they will not be affected a lot. Okay, because 82% already tied down to a fixed rate, and the other uh, 16 per 16% is on maybe other rates that we do not know right here lah, in this simple report. Now, uh, the other thing to take note of this is if you are interested, right, or you should go into the financial sheet. This way, you need to go into the financial sheet and try to find out uh, how many years is their fixed rates. Okay, if it's three years, that means you're talking about 2023, 24, 25, or potentially 26. These three years, uh, uh, the macro environment, uh, the market talk is, uh, uh, what do you call that? US interest rate high, right, has come to a peak. They peak already. That means 2024, 20, 2025 20, should be on the way down. Okay, so just imagine the rates now, if they have a fixed rate at the, for the next three years, and when they renew, the interest rate is actually lower. So they will free up more of their cash flow to give out as a dividend. Okay, or per perhaps buy some other properties to uh, increase their portfolio. Okay, so this is how you look at the interest rate uh, affecting the rates. So this one, I will be interested to go and find out uh, the fixed rate, how many years. Okay, next, uh, this is a summary of the capital land and the group result. Okay, so group revenue up. Okay, net income up. Now, uh, amount available for distribution, guys, when we talk about dividends, right, DBU, okay, dividends per unit, it comes from their income, okay, it comes from income. So one day, if you see any stock or any company, their amount available for distribution is higher than the net income, you must dive deeper, okay, to find out two things. Number one, are they borrowing money from the bank loans? to finance the dividend campaign. Or number two, is it a one-off, one-off special dividend that causes the amount to distribute uh, bigger? Okay, one-off is fine. Okay, but if it is, if it's, if it is persistently, okay, persistently you are looking at a higher distribution despite their property income is not there, then this is raised an alarm bell. Huh? Okay, so now this is the problem. Okay, a lot of REITs currently right, have this problem where uh, their DPU is on the decline. Why? It's because they are paying more interest. Okay, they are paying more interest to the, to the bank because of the higher interest rate environment. So if this is on a slow decline, it's fine. Some of the REITs out there, the decline is horrible until they have to cut dividends. Okay, so this one is still okay. It's on a decline, uh, but it's definitely affecting the share price. Later, we'll talk about the share price effect. Okay, so this is the actual DPU. So a small little 1% to 2% decline. And this is the share base. Okay, number of unit share base. Okay, so let's go down the list. Now, let us continue the grandmother story. Yeah. So they will tell you, okay, this one I read already, nothing important. And I want to show you those important Okay, so this is the reason uh, why the DPU declined. Okay, it is due to higher interest expense. Okay, resulting from higher rising interest rate, this one we know. And also on account of lower for an enlarged unit base. Okay, because they issued new units. So on the back of rising interest rate, okay, and also for issuance of more units, the dividend decline a bit is understandable. Okay. It is not because of poor business. If it is due to poor business, then we have to be careful already, right? Uh, this is the rest. So, so it's again, they reinforce now. The point one to three, uh, every week uh, will have a summary, executive summary here. Okay, then they will explain the grandmother story behind. So you can see they have a rental revision positive, which is good. So if any other rich rental revision is going down, <laughs> it's not a problem, okay? Uh, logistics segment led the charge with a 39.1% revision amid a tight supply. So logistics segment has tight supply, which is good. Huh? So when you read this, Singapore logistics segment has tight supply. Naturally, right, you will want to go and see your Maple Tree logistics. Okay, are they saying the same thing? If they're saying the same thing, then also go out and network a bit lah, with your friends and all that in the logistics uh, industry and see how, how is the situation. Okay, but these are listed company. We do not expect them to lie. Or un unlike, uh, okay, not, not unlike. 
uh, but there is a case where they lie, which is uh, in year 2004, China Aviation Oil. Wow, that one is a very famous fiasco. Okay, they have two set of financial statements and they submitted the fake one. Okay, this story, we leave it for another time. But the rest, uh, they're like Singapore rich. I have said many times, if you are very conservative, you go for the big three or big four. I forgot. Uh, Fraser, Maple Tree, Capital Lab. And capital. These are very big and uh, prime and proper sponsor that you should uh you should be safer. Okay, safer as in I have hold them for more than 10 years. You they able to overcome a lot of challenges and also um the those years uh, when the oil price was down uh, in 2015 2016, then a lot of oil companies swan to you or that means they fold up bankrupt. And some of them has this tendons of these reeds, okay? And this reeds is not heavily affected, okay? So in, in, in actual case, if you want to invest in reeds, uh, the other homework that you can do is to go down to tenant profile, okay? It's in their, in their quarterly report. They will tell you who is their anchor tenant. Any reeds uh, that have a big percentage of their space being leased out to a anchor tenant, to an anchor tenant, Maybe we work, okay. You know we were going down, right? So we work, wow, occupy thirty percent or twenty percent of the of the uh, uh ratio or of their not ratio of their office space. Then when we work, you know, go down. Then that space is free and they cannot collect rental. Worst is company not paying their rents for the last six months and then they go bankrupt. Chapter eleven. Oh, so this is something that you should also want to find out. Uh. But for the big four that I mentioned, I, I stand to be corrected, but I don't remember they have got very heavy uh, big anchor tenant. Usually, this will happen to smaller rigs. Okay, so let's continue the story. So value adding initiative. This one I read, uh, nothing that will sway my decision whether to hold or to sell a sentence rig. So uh, I, I'll skip this. Because this, the same ah, so haven't really go into the uh, dividends yet. Okay, let us go down. So they are telling you they are Okay lor, that's all lor. Oh, that's all lor. Oh, that's all, oh. The rest ah, no need to no need to. The, okay, you can read lah because I read already. Uh, nothing much. Then uh, you can come. Hey, there's borrowing here. Yeah, borrow. Hey, hey, hey. Here, 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 here. They have got the borrowing. Ah, uh, okay. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, you want to know where is their Properties, Singapore 63%, US, Australia, UK. Now, uh, Singapore dollar is very strong against the Australia. Also, therefore, the income bringing in from Australia may be down a bit due to the strength of Sing dollar. Lah. Okay, so, so just to let you know. Okay, and they are type of uh, investment value spent across, okay. Data center, ah, they have got 27 data center. Okay, logistics is 26%. Business space and life science is 47%. Okay, so let's go down this. So why, why do you need to know? Okay, why do you need to know this? Okay, in case in the business headline, uh, you read that certain industry is in problem. Uh, it's in problem. The company, the industry being wiped out, just like the 2015 the oil crisis. Also, this one doesn't have. Uh, so far, uh, we haven't read anything. And data center is growing in importance. Okay, so that we have a more stable banking uh, app. Uh. Okay, let's move down the list. Uh, okay, 94.4%. Okay, I see. Maintain a high, okay. Ah, rental revision. It's like I saw the word borrowing. Just now I saw the word borrowing. Uh, right here. Okay, let's take a look at proactive capital management. The great average remain healthy at 36.7. Like I said, it's, it must be less than 40. Okay, successful equity raising. Rated all in okay. So the interest uh, okay is at 3.3 percent. Okay, this stability can be due to the high profit uh, on fixed rate. The maturity profile, that maturity profile, ah, uh, that's important. Of the 15 percent borrowing due for renewal in a single year for the next five years. Also, there is no refinancing risk. Wow, this one uh, is very gold. This one is very gold. Very important. This is gold. Okay, not very gold. Pardon my poor English. Oh, because uh yeah, seldom read books. Eh? 
<laughs> so this is important. Huh? Minimizing financial uh, financing risk due for renewal in any single year for the next. So next five years, uh, they are set for this 3.3%. Okay, so that is good. Okay, now let's talk about the ah, this one or is what I always do read. Uh, sustainable impact. I yeah, uh, what energy, energy things. <laughs> Doesn't affect investor. Okay, let's take a look at the outlook. Now, uh, for outlook wise, right, usually they will say that means a uh, very, very uh politically correct uh, language being used here that definitely will not uh, emphasize on the the what you call that the risk too much. Okay. Now, you as an investor, you need to know lah. Okay, number one. Uh, where there are properties and all that, right? Okay, number two are uh, logistics. Uh, okay, the business climate. So if you see economy coming down, uh, okay, economy coming down, recession coming in, and you see unemployment rate uh, increases, okay, generally any other business will gonna hit, not only this particular rate. Okay, so all their income will go lower, right? So if their income go lower, they cannot pay out as much dividends. So dividend will go down. This is simple mathematics that you need to know. Also, you pay attention to the global macro environment. If business sentiment goes down, you see their net income go down, all the REITs are net income go down, this DPU keep reducing, right? You know the business sentiment not go out there. Also, you can expect to have uh, lesser dividends and on top of that because when a company uh, when a rich doesn't give uh doesn't increase their dividend or maintain a dividend and start to decrease the dividend share price will gonna hit okay now let us take a look at the mathematics okay let me just uh make this bigger for you so that you can see uh okay how do i do that uh that's my font size okay so i go to 36 okay 36 sweet 36, even if you have Lao Hua, you should be able to see. All right, so let's take a look at the current share price, $2.51 right now. Now, based on last year's dividend of whole year, whole year dividend, not one quarter. So the whole year, okay. Uh, I think for Capital Land Invest, they give their dividends four times a year. Okay, three times or four times. I think three to four times a year. Oh, sorry, two times a year only. Uh. Uh, two times, three to two to four times a year. Okay, you can count the number of bells we have on the chart. Uh, okay, let me do a proper one. Uh. Let's not be lazy. Uh, we, we, we don't, we ignore the COVID years because they were suspending the dividend, if I'm not wrong. Uh, let's do the peaceful year, 2018 to 2019. How many times? I remember it's half yearly. Uh. Uh, their dividend is half yearly. Okay, so you add the two dividends together, you get 13.7 cents. 13.7 cents per year. Okay, so if you take it and divide by the current share price, which you're going to buy right now, you get a dividend yield of 5.46%. Now, if you put your money, today is what day? Today is October, 24th of October, 2023. Now, if you go outside and find fixed rate, you can get probably about 3.7, 3.5%. And if you go to T bills, treasury bills, Singapore treasury bills, you get about close to 4%, 375 to 4%. Oh, so if this dividend falls below that level, then it makes the rich very unattractive. Okay, unattractive. So based on 13.7 cents, okay, you will get a 5.46% yield. Now, if the dividend uh per unit, distribution per unit, not dividend per unit, distribution per unit falls to 13 cents. Okay, falls to 13 cents. If you take 13 cents and the share price is 2.51. You divide it, you will get an yield of 5.18%. Still not too bad. But if the business environment uh, is so poor that it can only pay out 10 cents in a year, okay, 10 cents in a year, if the share price is 2.51, you get less than 4% right here. You get that less than 4% dividend yield. Now, the thing is, guys, if the D DPU is decreasing, right, no way the share price will stay at one fixed price. This is just an example. So if the DPU, now let me share with you how to estimate the share price, right? Okay, so the DPU, if it pays 10 cents a year, that means business recession all comes in, uh, it only pay you 10 cents per year. Okay, 
So to get a 5% yield, now why do I use 5%? Because 5% is normally what ascenders reads uh, trades at. When it's good deal, it's about 5%. Okay. If it's uh, share price too over extended, it, o it always goes to about 4 plus percent. Like I said, I follow these reads for a decade, so I roughly know their range. Okay, and in very, very bad condition, it will shoot up to 6 to 7 percent. Okay, eh, sorry, no 7 percent, uh, 6 plus percent I ever see before. Okay, so to get a 5 percent yield, uh, if the company is only paying 10 cents DPU, you take this 10 cents, you divide by 5, right? You can see your share price will be two dollars guys two dollars so when the dpu is decreasing your share price right will decrease accordingly or oh, i get this question a lot like uh when the risk is down right people will ask hey, can i buy can i average down okay you need to know the mathematics if the share price is down it's because they give lower yield is because the market try to price it at about five to six percent dividend yield Okay, seven to eight percent. Uh, I only saw it during the two thousand eight financial crisis. Okay, financial crisis. Now, those of you who did not go through that time, let me share with you the feeling. Okay, the feeling is your money in the bank. Your money in the bank is unsafe. Okay, because banks are going bankrupt during that time. Banks are going bankrupt during that time. So. The number one fear everybody have at that time is, what wow, shit, which company next that will go belly up? So it was quite a scary time. That, that was the time when I saw the rich dividend yield shoot up 6 7%. Okay? So this will give you an idea, okay? An idea why the share price will fall if the DPU keep decreasing, okay? So I hope this video helps you. Now, if you've got a question, you can raise it up in our Facebook or you can raise it up during the Traders Club meeting. Now, for those of you who are watching from the YouTube, okay, you can leave a comment under the uh, comment field and let me know if I miss anything, okay? Because this one, I just want to do a quick one. Quick one, uh, in the end, also take more than 10 minutes. All right, see you in the next video, guys. Trade safe, invest safe. Bye-bye.